Oh yeah, this series is going to be really good. Mavericks up one nothing. Just got done watching the game. The game ended about a minute ago, so I'm immediately reacting. And I will actually get this recording up in a timely manner, unlike my reaction to game one of the Eastern Conference Finals last night. But let's talk about a few things. One, I just love that whenever Stan Van Gundy and Reggie Miller are on a TNT broadcast, they notice something in a game and you know when they initially make the point about something they notice it does sound smart well at least on svg's end because reggie miller is just annoying but stan van gundy just loved harping on the fact that the timberwolves were in drop coverage as if the team does not have rudy gobert on the roster but that's neither here nor there reggie miller constantly pointing out that anthony edwards was tired in the fourth quarter was so fucking annoying and redundant it's like, just talk about the game, dog. Like, we see that Anthony Edwards is a little bit tired, but he made some big shots in the fourth quarter, even though I thought he was weirdly passive in this game, especially in those third and fourth quarters when the Mavericks were making inroads. But my God, man, we get it. You notice something because you have a keen eye and you like to harp on it and make yourself sound smart. It was just fucking annoying. But regardless... What a win for the Mavericks because somehow, some way, this team shot 6 of 25 from 3 and still won. And I think that just speaks to how unguardable Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving are. And that is the main thing that I look at when I look at this game. I pick Timberwolves in 6, full disclosure. No matter how good the Timberwolves' defense is, no matter how good Jaden McDaniels, Anthony Edwards, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, all the defenders they have that are really good, it doesn't matter if you cannot stop two of the best offensive players the league has ever seen. There were times when Anthony Edwards, two possessions actually in that first half where Anthony Edwards was switched on to Luka Doncic, and Doncic one time got an and one foul off of Anthony Edwards on the block, and then another time Luka spun off of Anthony Edwards for a layup. And it's really tough to make someone like Anthony Edwards look tiny, but Luka Doncic did that. Kyrie Irving got off to a fantastic start, and he even talked about it in the in-between quarter interview about how he wanted to set the tone because he has been in the conference finals before multiple times and he just wanted to set the tone and set the tone he did because he was frying Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards did get fried low key on the defensive end. Well, when you're guarding Kyrie and Luka Doncic, that's going to be hard. Jaden McDaniels, he tried his best guarding Luka. I actually thought he played him pretty well in the first half, but Luka just started slowly but surely getting going he was still getting guys involved killing the minnesota timberwolves drop coverage dishing the ball to gafford getting the ball to lively eventually the wolves did adjust and stan van gundy did shut up about the drop coverage because gobert and cat would play higher at the level sometimes they would put two on the ball and you were able to force lively and gafford or even Derek Jones Jr. to make decisions in space, which is something you don't want to see if you're a Mavericks fan. And they made some adjustments, but the offense for the Timberwolves, I could tell the Mavericks were just going to be in this game because the Wolves shot an unsustainable 18 of 49 from three. They made 18 threes in this game. And I felt like them starting off the game hot from three kind of made the Timberwolves high on their own supply, if that makes sense because they were clearly driving and kicking just to get the open three. Anthony Edwards, I thought, passed up on a few driving opportunities and instead was throwing erratic passes. He had two passes that just sailed high over his teammate's head. There were a few layups I thought he passed in the third quarter and the fourth quarter to, you know, kick it out to teammates for open threes. And I just thought Anthony Edwards was really passive tonight. And look, that's what comes with being a superstar you get the praise when you play well and you get some critiques when i feel like you're not being aggressive enough because i do think while the mavericks were able to put anthony edwards in check i did think anthony edwards was able to get to the lane a few times and there were just a few times i thought he could have gotten fouled i think anthony edwards took two free throws in the game 
just not aggressive enough. Meanwhile, the Mavericks were just getting whatever they wanted in the paint because Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving were just killing the Minnesota Timberwolves, whether it was in drop coverage, whether the Timberwolves trapped on the ball, Kyrie Irving attacking from the corners whenever he was off the ball, P.J. Washington, you could tell immediately the Timberwolves wanted to go to Cat in the post on P.J. Washington early in this game, but P.J. Washington, I thought, did play well and he rebounded well. He really did well on the glass, and Cat was 6 of 20 in this game, though I actually thought Cat had a pretty good game, and he was bailing out the Timberwolves with some incredible shot making in that fourth quarter. He had a few lobs to go bare with that 4-5 pick and roll, but the Mavericks at the end of the day, they have two of the best closers the league has ever seen, and the Timberwolves have a young, rising, capital S superstar that can close games for the Timberwolves, but you're going up against a team that has two of the best to do it, and two that can attack your two best defenders, Anthony Edwards and Jada McDaniels. And by the way, Jada McDaniels played really well in this game for the third game in a row. I would be worried if I was a Timberwolves fan that his unsustainable shooting will eventually, you know, regress to the mean. But for the most part, I thought he played good defense on Doncic. But Doncic was just spectacular in that fourth quarter, man. A 7-0 run by himself to put the Mavericks up one in that fourth quarter to let the Mavericks take that lead. And then just answering the bell with big threes. Anthony Edwards hit a three where I thought with 314 left, if the Timberwolves got a stop while they were up four, that would have been very tough for the Mavericks. But Luka just hit this nasty step back three in Anthony Edwards' face where he could have shot the wide open three off the catch, but waited for Anthony Edwards to recover. Then he stepped back, drilled a three. Mavericks were within one. And then just some dumb decisions from the Timberwolves too. I don't know why you would give it to Jaden McDaniels in that situation on the next possession. Cat gave it to Jaden McDaniels from the top of the key. McDaniels caught himself under the basket and tried to throw it to Gobert, but threw it right to the Mavs. And there were just a few too many crucial turnovers. Mike Conley and a few Timberwolves actually could have shot this three to put the Timberwolves up one with over a minute to go. But Conley decided to pass it up and tried to lob it to Gobert. And who was there to break up that lob? Looking like Rudy Gobert breaking up lobs, Luka Doncic. And that is the story of this Mavericks season. Trades to bolster your team at the trade deadline, buy-in defensively, over the last three months morph into an elite defensive team, and they've been an elite defensive team all playoffs, and they have gotten buy-in from their two best players to at least be positive defenders. And now, when you look at it, both of these teams are huge. Besides Mike Conley and Kyrie Irving, there isn't really a guy out there on the court that is under 6'5". And so the Mavericks, they're willing to get into the mud defensively and then make tough shots because they have two of the best tough shot makers to ever do it. And Doncic had 15 points in that fourth quarter, frying McDaniels alive, frying Minnesota's defensive coverages. And now for the Timberwolves, we'll see what they do. I do think they need to get Anthony Edwards moving a little bit more. Anthony Edwards, he did have a passive game scoring-wise, but he still did other things. He rebounded well. He was playmaking well, although I thought at times he was a little too unselfish. But this is going to be a good series, man. This is going to be nip and tuck back and forth. Also, another thing to note about this series for the Timberwolves, the difference in opponent. The Nuggets really did not have enough adequate rim protection. Meanwhile, the Mavericks have two guys that they could play throughout the 48 minutes to protect the rim really well. And I thought that also impacted the Timberwolves offense. And that's why they shot a lot of threes. Forgot to mention that within the first minute of Kyle Anderson playing in this game, I was about to tweet that Kyle Anderson should not be in this series just because the Mavs were just ignoring him straight up. But the Timberwolves did a nice job moving Kyle Anderson into open spaces in the middle of the key so he could get his push shot off. Kyle Anderson is still a solid playmaker and can do stuff, is functional in the paint. Even made a corner three, although you don't want him taking those and it takes 500 years to load up. 
but Kyle Anderson also played well. I just wonder what the Timberwolves are going to do now because they're not going to shoot 18 of 49 again, and they kind of tailed off in the second half shooting the three, and I thought they fell in love with it too much. They took nearly 50 threes. I don't know how many times the Timberwolves took 50 threes this season, but the Mavs played some great defense. They loaded up the paint on Anthony Edwards. They were fine with letting Rudy Gobert try out spin moves in space and all that stuff. And I don't know why the Timberwolves keep doing that. I understand wanting to feed the beast because Gobert does so much for you defensively. But my God, man, you got to get him the ball near the rim because he has very shaky hands in terms of catching the ball. And if he tries to do a dribble, you're just asking for disaster. But this is going to be a fantastic series, man. I have been excited all weekend, basically since game seven of Timberwolves Nuggets ended. I was super excited for this series because the Wolves have a awesome defense. They have awesome defenders, but they are going up against two first ballot Hall of Famers when they retire and two of the toughest shot makers ever. And they happen to be defended by two of the very best in the NBA on the perimeter. The chess match is just going to be so fascinating, man. Also, I don't know about you guys, but how the fuck did they call a basket interference on Carl Anthony Towns because the replay looks like the ball is pretty clearly outside of the cylinder. I don't understand how they also went to review it and still say that it was basket interference. Why do we keep letting Mark Davis and these other shitty refs continue to get big playoff games? Why? I don't understand it. Mark Davis, Tony Brothers, Courtney Kirkland has been fucking terrible all playoffs. I don't understand why we keep giving these guys assignments because they have been consistently inconsistent and terrible with their calls. But that's neither here nor there. The refs aren't the reason the Wolves lost this game. But my God, some of these fucking calls, the late call on Jaden McDaniels, even though he clearly fouled Luka Doncic, I hate that call from refs that is my pet peeve it's either a fucking foul or it's not if it's a foul call it so they can have the chance to get an and one if you're gonna let it go let it go even though it's wrong to let it go at least stand on your decision and i fucking hate that from nba referees but anyway excited for game two